All right, getting back to our Reaper Giant series, this time the Cloud Giant. I think this is my favorite sculpt out of uh, all the Giants Reapers done. A little bit strange supermodel pose our Cloud Giant's in, but uh, sculpting is pretty decent. Uh, I'm betting this is a Werner Clock miniature, just uh, going by how it's sculpted. Uh, we do have the issue with the bones. Uh, material it's a bit soft we don't have too much detail to work with uh, when it comes to some of the finer bits but overall pretty good now the issue i'm having with the cloud giant here is since i'm doing all the giants and the frost giants next that also is supposed to have a light blue skin and same as the cloud giant so i don't want to do the same skin tone twice uh, so i decided to do this one a little bit more blue and then when we get to the frost giant that's going to be a little bit more white but starting off already did a base coat of Vallejo Gain Color Steel Gray and then over that I am doing a dry brush of a Steel Gray mixed with Verdigris, uh, Gain Color Verdigris. And just dry brushing this first layer, uh, kind of establishing where I want the colors. Uh, it's a quick, uh, quick way to jump in with both feet uh, so we don't start up with layering right away. Uh, this is going to add some shadow to the areas where we need it and highlight the highlights essentially. For the next step we've added a bit more of the verdigris now and again still dry brushing this stage to save time. Uh, dry brushing I know a lot of people think it's just for rough surfaces but mainly it is uh, and I wouldn't recommend dry brushing the whole figure unless uh, you know speed or other factors determines you know that's how you want to paint it but uh, you can dry brush a few layers as long as we uh, layer thin coats on top of the dry brushing uh, we can disguise the dry brushing and still uh, you know, build up to a nice smooth color and when we get to the end you know you tell me if you can see any of the dry brush marks here Now that we have a good color established, we can start actually putting on layers the standard way. And using the same mixture before, we have the steel gray, the verdigris, and to that I've added some white. Now two things to keep in mind uh, when we're doing the layering here um, that makes it kind of difficult. First of all, we have a lot of smooth curved surfaces uh, which are very difficult to highlight uh, smoothly. And also, uh, we're using a fairly light color here, which also is difficult to uh, layer on. So uh, at this point, we're using fairly uh, thin layers and slowly, very slowly building up the colors. Uh, that's kind of the reason for the first two layers being dry brushed. I already tried this once, uh, layering, and I got up to about 20 steps. And I didn't like the color that I was coming out, but also I wanted to speed it up a bit. So the dry brushing uh, puts on a translucent layer as well. So that kind of saved a few steps there, and then we could just slowly blend away that dry brushing with the layering that we put on top. And then by adding a bit more white, adding another highlight layer, picking out some of the details now. Could have gone a little bit lighter, but I decided I was going a bit in the wrong direction uh, so we're gonna darken up a few spots uh, next but uh, this is very you can see the small areas it's being applied on right now just picking out some of the finer details as always knuckles cheekbones nose chin uh, any other areas kneecaps in this case that were uh, the light would catch and we want to uh, add a bit extra con contrast to At this point I decided I needed a bit more contrast, uh, especially around any areas where the skin would hit uh, any of the other objects she's wearing. So I wanted to go back and insert some shade, which we can do easily because this is a larger figure, uh, using a mix of our original Steel Gray, Game Color Stormy Blue, and then that's thinned with some Glaze Medium. Now the Glaze Medium is gonna soften this color so it's not so intense. Uh, it's also going to slow down the drying time because I'm trying to put this in the recesses and kind of just blend it in uh, so 
it stays wet long enough so I can blend it in. Also, if I make any mistakes, uh, I can just brush it away. So we're just going around, adding any extra shade underneath like the knees, uh, inside of the knees, and any other areas where I think it needs it. Mostly in the, um, again, where the flesh meets any other object. Cloud giants are supposed to be uh, very concerned with opulence, riches, uh, fineries, things like that. So trying to keep that in mind when I'm painting this thing. Uh, wants, figure, I'm trying to paint like she's wearing more of a gown. Uh, of course, there's a lot of gold and stuff we have to paint. Uh, but when coming to the breastplate, uh, could paint it metallic or gold, but you know what, it just seemed that would be very uncomfortable. That's the main reason because she's not wearing under anything underneath it. So I, I decided to go for leather, uh, which may be a bit more comfortable, I don't know. Anyway, uh, starting off with some game color, leather brown, figuring this would, you know, somewhat of a lighter color, kind of matching the gold, uh, which may or may not work, we will see, but uh, that's what we're starting off with. To that leather brown, we've added some game color plague brown and starting to add on the highlights, uh, kind of the obvious areas where it needed to be highlighted. I uh, don't think I have to point those out, but I uh, do want to point out just real quick uh, on a side note, the uh, the shoulder pad areas, the polderons, whatever you want to call it, perfect practice of highlighting on those things because they're, they're ridges and they're perfectly um, parallel with the ground or with the sun. Uh, great way to practice your highlighting uh, just on this one little miniature because each one of those little uh, strips of leather you shade at the bottom you highlight towards the top a uh, black line between each uh, you can't get any easier than highlighting that or practicing highlighting on that little piece of the miniature Next is a mix of our previous Plague Brown, this time with yellow ochre added, and starting to work on some more intense highlights. Again, those shoulder areas, perfect example for a practice area of how to do highlighting. Uh, you see it bends all the way around, so we highlight the tops of each ones, and then the center when we get to the center of the, the top areas of the shoulders. Uh, also, we can use a bit thicker paint here because it's a smaller area, but when we get to the other areas, uh, around her uh, waist and breasts. We need to thin out the paint a bit more, again, because those are larger, uh, smoother areas. So we need thinner paint for those. Skipping ahead slightly to the final highlight, uh, we are now working with uh, Vallejo yellow ochre mixed with some beige. I uh, just want to show you the final edging on the shoulder areas and this is the only area that's getting this edging highlight because there are no edges around her waist so uh, you don't have to use all the colors just because it's the same color we're not highlighting to this same amount uh, this is just an edge there's no edges on her waist so it's not getting that extra highlight and then finally just to add a little bit more shade uh, in a few areas using Army Painter's Strong Tone. Uh, I don't use this too often. I usually prefer uh, using my own washes, uh, mixing up my own with uh, glaze medium and inks, but uh, decided to use this for some reason. You know, sometimes I just grab a color and figure, yeah, let's use this one again. So just adding a bit of extra shade subtly uh, around the shoulders in any uh, areas, kind of doing the the dark lining like we did with the flesh uh, a while back but uh, yeah luckily we can do this because uh, it's such a large figure once again so we can easily get a brush into those recesses and add some extra details when I started this project I only had one goal in mind and that was all the colors needed to be white or very light, closely to white. And so we've already done the skin a very light blue. Uh, the cloak, or the, uh, excuse me, the club, I already had in mind what color I wanted for that, uh, which leaves the uh, skirt, uh, we're gonna have to do that a warm white. 
uh, because we already have a lot of cool colors going on. So we are starting off with a mix of Alejo model color camo, German camo medium brown, uh, mixed with about an equal amount of Alejo model color Iraqi sand. Next, we apply just straight Iraqi sand, leaving that previous mixture just in the recesses. For the highlights, I've now added a very small amount of white to the Iraqi sand, and now we can start beginning to pick out all those folds. Uh, this is a lot easier to highlight than the skin. We have nice obvious areas uh, that we need to highlight. Uh, so we can add more contrast here than we could on the skin because we have those deeper folds. I skipped a few of the highlight steps because this video is already long as it is. We still have a lot more to do. Uh, but a couple more additional highlighting steps uh, were added simply by adding more white each time and working towards the outer edges of all the folds. Uh, this last one is almost pure white and we're just doing the edging now, just picking out not every single edge but just the ones that protrude the most that would uh, need to catch the most light. So we've painted the flesh a very, very cool white, more of a light blue. Uh, we did a very warm white on the skirt. That leaves a uh, different color for the club. I wanted the club to be white marble, but it's a bit too textured to get a real marble effect. So we're just gonna increase the contrast and hope everything comes out. But for that, I'm using Vallejo Game Color Stonewall Gray, which is a, it's gray. It's kind of in the middle between, uh, it's a bit warmer than cool, uh, but it's fairly neutral, I'd say. So we're giving this whole thing a base coat to start off with. To the Stonewall Gray, I've added white and beginning to add the highlights. And that's uh, a bit of a problem here because, uh, because of the bones material, I really had no idea what I was painting. It's obviously a club, but there's uh, some figures on the club, but I couldn't tell what the figures were. Uh, took a while until I discovered that it's actually uh, two, I don't know, angels or women uh, on opposite sides. I could see one of them on the back side, but I couldn't tell what was on the front side. Uh, they will slowly emerge, though. More white added now, and because of the amount of texture and also because of the marble effect, uh, I am over highlighting a bit uh, more than I normally would. Uh, but still, at this point, I was trying to, I think I was still trying to figure out what the hell I was painting. Uh, again, this side, the back side, easy to see, was the other side where um, it took a while to figure out exactly what it is. But uh, I can tell the areas that uh, bulge out, those are the areas that are gonna, we're going to want to highlight. So I don't know what it is, but I know what needs to be highlighted. And then we finish up with a wash of Vallejo model color German gray paint uh, thinned with a healthy amount of glaze medium. Uh, the glaze medium is going to soften it uh, because this is extremely dark color to be using on, on almost pure white. Uh, so, uh, but I did want to add extra contrast to it again so we get a somewhat marble effect and also to pick out the details because it wasn't until I added the wash here I realized exactly what I just painted. On to the hair now. Now, I needed another white or very light color for this, so basically through the process of elimination, trying to figure out what will work better. Well, obviously a cool white is gonna work better with her skin, uh, but I don't wanna be the same color tone, so uh, used some Vallejo Game Color Electric Blue, and that was heavily mixed with white. Already put on one undercoat, and now I'm going through the process of adding uh, 
the highlights essentially just leaving the undercoat in because uh, of the light colors we do want a dark line where the hair meets the flesh so all these light colors are still well separated For the next highlight, simply more white added. Uh, at this point, we basically got a almost pure white. Uh, you can see a slight blue tint to the color. And then for the final highlight, we're using pure white. Um, I mentioned a few times before, some of you may remember, uh, highlighting hair is kind of difficult because the, the thicker area where the hair is, the more intense the color is going to be. So like the very, someone who's balding on top, let's say, if they have black hair, you're going to be able to see skin there, uh, but on like the sides, it's going to be more intensely black. Uh, kind of doing the opposite of that here, simply because we're working with so light of colors, we're working with a, a white hair here. And I do need to highlight that in a, a regular fashion. So uh, it's kind of opposite of the way you would normally highlight hair, but just because it's such a light color, that's, that's what's needed here. Hang in there, people. We're entering the home stretch here. One final thing to paint, and that is all the gold. Already undercoated with a dark brown and uh, on top of that, I'm actually putting another base coat layer to build up a nice rich gold color uh, using a mix of Vallejo Game Air Glorious Gold uh, mixed with Game Color Plague Brown. And so slight metallic sheen to it. Uh, the, the, the Game Air, the Glorious Gold is giving us our metallic sheen. Uh, the Plague Brown is giving it uh, more coverage power. So it's, it's not so transparent. It's going to cover up. I decided to get a bit experimental with the gold here. So to highlight it, I have a mix of, let's see if I get this right, Game Air Glorious Gold, Game Color Sun Yellow, uh, Model Air Silver, and what's the one I'm forgetting? Plague Brown, I believe. Uh, yeah, it's a kind of confusing mix. I was trying to go for a more yellowish gold. I uh, really don't think it worked out, but since I did her breastplate leather, uh, which has that same yellow goldish color to it, I wanted to try something a little bit new. So after playing around with that giant color mix, uh, for the highlights, I wanted more of the uh, metallic sheen, so I went the simple route, just glorious gold and silver and using that to uh, add the highlights where needed on the edges. To in increase the difference between the leather and the gold areas, I decided to try to give the gold a glaze of yellow ink, which kind of was a big mistake. Um, Gold in yellow, I know people think gold is yellow, but I mean, putting the yellow ink glaze on it made it just look yellow and not gold anymore. Uh, managed to, uh, oh, I don't want to say save it, but uh, I think it looked a lot better after I reapplied the uh, gold and silver highlights. Um, this is a different, it's a definitely different look. I don't think I would do it again, trying the yellow glaze, but um, it's different. That's all I can really say. And then to finish off the gold, we have a wash with sepia ink, putting in shade in the recesses on the underneath areas, and also just hoping to try to pick out a bit more of the detail work. Uh, the gold does have like lion heads uh, worked into it in several places, but it's, it's really hard to see. It's a bit muddled because of the bones material. So adding a wash, uh, again, hopefully we'll pick some of those out as well as add a bit of contrast and keep that gold from uh, blending in to the leather.
I normally say, and with that, we are done. Uh, but I did go back and add a bit more uh, details. Decided I needed a bit of color onto her, so I added some gemstones painted in the traditional manner. Uh, highlight or shade towards the upper left to highlight towards the lower right and add a little drop of white. Uh, did those in blue and green. Uh, also, she has a little like lightning bolt or something going along her uh, chest. Uh, so I painted that with turquoise and had a little bit of turquoise around her leg as well. Um, I was really starting to think I made a mistake painting the uh, the, the chest uh, armor uh, leather because that's too similar to the gold. But overthinking about it, I think it actually works out too well. Uh, it, it works okay. Um, you can definitely use a different color on it. It's just the idea of clouds, you know, when you think clouds, what colors do you think of? It's a very small palette, so I'm not sure what color to paint it. That's why I went with the just kind of neutral leather color. But uh, after sitting on it for a few days, you know, I think she came out fairly decently. Uh, a few areas I would like to fix. Again, I don't know, maybe adding a bit more color here and there would work out. I really wanted to add some color on the trim of her skirt, but after sitting and staring at it for a few days, I couldn't, I just couldn't decide what pattern to add. Um, so I may go back, revisit this miniature one day and uh, add a little extra detail to the skirt because I really think she does need it. Uh, it's just kind of, again, deciding what detail to add because, you know, a little viney or leafy pattern, something like that won't fit. I don't want to do lightning bolts because that's more storm giant. So I'll have to think it, mull it over. But I wanted to finish this up and at least uh, get on to something new. But that's it. We are done with our Cloud Giant. We have two more Giants to go in our Giant series. So n coming up next, well, next in the series, not necessarily next chronologically, will be the Frost Giant. So come back for the next video and come back for the Frost Giants. As always, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.